हेलो व्यूवर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई एम हर्षम अली खान नाउ आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग द प्रॉब्लम्स द थ्योरी ऑन द सब्जेक्ट स्टैटिस्टिक्स फॉर मैनेजमेंट ऑलरेडी थ्री यूनिट्स हैव कंप्लीटेड नाउ इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू यूनिट नंबर वन प्रोबेबिलिटी सो इन यूनिट नंबर वन द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज रिगार्डिंग what is uh, the introduction to statistics for management the what is the origin development and managerial application of statistics these are the theoretical uh, i'll i'll provide one video on this topic then secondly measure of central tendency measure of dispersion measure of skewness and curtises all this already i have uploaded the videos last part of this unit number 1 is the probability and bayes theorem so now i'm going to start the topic probability without understanding the concept the theorem the approaches you should not go to solve the problem it's just like without foundation you're constructing a structure it's highly difficult to understand so give more importance to the theory in examination you may get a theory question regarding what is probability what are the different approaches to probability what are the theorems theorems of probability etc now the contents in this unit i am going to explain you about the introduction to probability then concept and definition of probability next one approaches to the study of probability different approaches are the classical approach relative frequency approach subjective approach and axiomatic approach the theorems the two theorems of probability multiplication theorem and addition theorem and the types of probability marginal probability then conditional probability joint probability then bayes theorem what is bayes theorem what is the application of bayes theorem lastly what are the basic concepts which are used in probability the basic concepts like random experiment trial event mutually exclusive event equally likely events independent events dependent events and exhaustive events now next video i am going to explain you all these concepts which are used in probability so before proceeding to explain the introduction to probability take the screenshot of the points which i have written on the board then i'll explain every point in detail now meaning and definition to the term probability probability is the word which is very frequently used in our common conversation whenever there is uncertainty about the happening of an event we use the word probably or possibly or likely so with these words will be used whenever there is uncertainty about the happening of an event but this is just a layman's language that probability is the term which is used whenever there is uncertainty of a particular thing just like for example probably it may rain tonight or probability probably that uh, a team will win the match probability that mr x may not take the class so in all these sentences there is an element of uncertainty the event may happen or the event may not happen that's why we use the word probable but that is a, just a vague definition meaning of the term probability in statistics and mathematics probability is a measure of uncertainty we give a numerical value for this uncertainty under some conditions so in layman's terminology the word prob probability means that there is uncertainty about what is going to happen so in our normal language whenever there is uncertainty of an event to happen then we use the word probably probability now however in mathematics and statistics we try to present conditions under which we give a numerical value about uncertainty so under some conditions we are going to give a numerical value to the uncertainty and apply certain methods of calculating numerical value of probability and expectations so there are some methods of finding out the value of the uncertainty numerical value will give for probability so in mathematics statistics there is specific numerical value to uncertainty and that numerical value is called probability 
this there is a method of calculating that numerical value under certain certain circum circumstances the development of theory of probability dates back to 17th century it's not a new concept the concept of probability is coming from the 17th century but the origin of the word probability was from the games of chance like uh, drawing a card from a pack of cards throwing a coin throwing a die these are called games of chances when you throw the coin you may get head or tail but there is uncertainty of getting the head or getting the tail similarly when it, uh, when you uh, draw a card from a pack of cards we are uncertain regarding what type of card we may get similarly when you throw a die a die consists of six faces we may get 1 2 3 4 5 6 any of the face we may get there is uncertainty so originally the probability was originated from the games of chances but later on the probability is applied in every field because in every field we will find uncertainty and wherever there is uncertainty we try to calculate that uncertainty by a numerical value and that numerical value is called probability now nowadays probability has become one of the basic tool in statistics in the whole field of statistics probability has occupied very important place because probability is applied in uncertainty and every field there is uncertainty and we apply the probability so therefore probability may be defined as the chance or likelihood that an event will occur in ordinary language we can say probability is the term which is applied whenever there is uncertainty of happening of an event a probability of zero denotes that the event will never happen normally the numerical value of probability will range from 0 to 1 if the probability value is 0 that means the event is never going to happen example when you throw a coin when you throw a die what is the probability of getting 7 up it is impossible because in the die itself only six faces are there how we can be able to get the seven value it is not possible so probability value is zero similarly a cricket match is played between india and england what is the probability that pakistan will win the match zero because in the match only india and england are there how possibility of uh, pakistan winning the game it's not possible so whenever there is uh, no possibility of occurring of the event the probability value is zero similarly the probability value will be one when the event is definitely going to happen example when you throw the coin you may get a head or you may get a tail definitely compulsory you are going to get either head or tail so probability of getting head or tail is one certain definite so this is the meaning of the term probability now approaches to the study of probability different authors have given different study or approaches to the term probability so broadly we divide the approaches into four categories classical approach relative frequency approach subjective approach and axiomatic approach in examination very frequently i have seen in question papers they will ask you what are the different approaches to the study of probability so this is very very important four approaches are there the first approach is classical approach this is the oldest and the simple approach to the study of probability oldest and the simple approach to the study of probability is classical approach according to this classical approach probability is the ratio of number of favorable cases divided by total number of outcomes example when you throw the coin the total number of outcomes are 2 you may get head or you may get tail maximum 2 only what is the probability of getting head only one head is there the number of favorable cases one total number of outcomes are two the probability of getting head is 1 by 2 this is according to classical approach this is according to classical approach one more example i'll give you in a pack of cards total 56 cards are there out of which uh, 52 cards sorry 52 cards are there out of 52 cards four are kings So what is the probability of getting a king in the draw of a card from the pack of cards? So total number of favorable cases are four. 
total number of outcomes are 52. So 4 by 52 is the probability of drawing a card which is a king. So number of favorable cases divided by total number of outcomes. This is the formula for probability according to classical approach. So it was originated in the problems pertaining to games of chance. So actually classical approach is applied in the games of chance because total number of outcomes we know and how many are favorable cases also we know it. That's why the classical approach is more suitable in case of games of chance. According to this approach probability is the ratio of number of favorable cases to the total number. The formula is P probability is equal to number of favorable cases divided by total number of equally likely cases. That's all. This is the theory regarding classical approach. Now relative frequency approach. There are some limitations to the term uh, probability according to classical approach. Classical approach is best suited only in the games of chance. Wherever the total uh, outcomes we know, then only we can apply classical approach. But there are many cases where we cannot be able to know what are the total possible outcomes. The total possible outcomes we cannot know. So in that case, the classical approach will fail. So in that case, we apply relative frequency approach. Simple example I've given, the classical definition of probability suffers from certain limitation. First, the definition cannot be applied whenever it is not possible to make simple enumeration of cases which can be considered equally likely. Total number of outcomes, total number of cases are how many? If it is not, uh, cannot be able to calculate, we cannot apply classical approach. Then, uh, for example, what is the probability of a student passing an examination? When a student writes the examination, there are two possible outcomes. That means the student may pass or the student may fail. So only two outcomes are there. So what is the probability of passing the student? One by two. What is the probability of failing, failing of the student? One by two. But can we apply that passing and failing is one by two probability for every student? No. There are some above average students, there are some below average students, some students are genius students. So we cannot say that the probability of passing or failing is one by two for every student. No, it will differ from student to student. So that's why the classical approach is failed in this case. We cannot give the same probability for every student. So since there are only two possible outcomes, passing or not passing, we, can, we may say that the probability of passing the examination is one by two. It is not correct. But by doing so, we may ignore other facts. The student may be first class student in which the probability of passing may be nearly one. If the student is a perfect student, genuine, I mean a genius student, then the probability of passing will be nearing one. Because there are more chances that he will pass the examination. Similarly, a very weak student, very weak student, the probability is not one by two. It is less than one by two. Like that it differs from student to student. The definition thus fails to provide satisfactory answer. In fact, the classical approach is difficult or impossible to apply as soon as we deviate from the games of chance. Huh? In the games of chance, this classical ap approach is fully suited. Correctly, we can apply it. Confidently, we can apply it. But once when we move away from this uh, uh, games of chance, it is difficult to apply the theorem. Now, in relative frequency definition, the definition of classical approach is accepted with the condition that formula will be true only if the trials are repeated indefinitely. That means this relative frequency approach says the classical approach is correct only when we continue the trials infinitely. When we conduct the experiment for more number of times repeatedly, then only this uh, formula is correct. Otherwise, the formula is not correct. That is the meaning of relative frequency approach. Next is subjective approach. According to this approach, we assign a weight between 0 and 1 to an event according to the degree of his belief. So sometimes without applying any formula, we can give the numerical value of probability according to one's judgment, according to one's opinion. For example, 
According to my opinion, the probability that A team will win the match is 0.9. So 0.9 is the probability that A team will win the match. So how we got this 0.9 according to my judgment, according to my belief. So this is called subjective probability which depends on the judgment or belief of the person. The value will range from 0 to 1. This approach does not apply any formula. It gives the probability value according to belief or judgment. The subjective approach is very broad and flexible. However, one has to be very careful. That means the subjective approach is very good because we are giving the probability value according to our belief, judgment, but we should be very much careful. The person who is giving the value of probability should have experience, should have some logic. Then only he can give the correct value of probability. Otherwise, the probability value will be misleading. We cannot rely on the word on the calculated value of probability. Last one is axiomatic approach. So when this approach is followed, no precise definition of probability is given. Rather, we give certain axioms or postulates on which probability calculations are based. So according to axiomatic approach, no specific definition is there. No definition formula is there. The probability depends on some axioms or postulates or rules. Some rules are there. The probability is based on some rules. And the whole field of probability is based on the following three axioms. The axiomatic theory says the complete probability depends on three rules, three postulates. So what are the three postulates? The probability of an event ranges from 0 to 1. If the event cannot take place, its probability shall be 0 and if it is certain, its probability shall be 1. The first rule, the value of the probability will range from 0 to 1. If the event is not at all going to happen, then the probability value will be 0. If the event is definitely, certainly going to happen, the probability will be given 1. That is the first rule. Second rule, the probability of the entire sample space is 1. The probability of the entire sample space is 1. And thirdly, if A and B are two mutually exclusive events, then the probability of occurrence of either A or B denoted by P A union B shall be given as P A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B. The third rule says if there are two events A and B and both are mutually exclusive, Mutually exclusive means when A happens, B will never happen. When B happens, A will never happen. Any one of them will happen. That is called mutually exclusive. So if the two events A and B are mutually exclusive, what is the probability of either A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. Simple example, when you throw the coin, there are two possible outcomes, head or tail. And both are mutually exclusive. Because when you get head, you will not get tail. When you get tail, you will not get head. That means mutually exclusive. Then what is the probability of either head or tail? The probability of head is 1 by 2. And the probability of tail is 1 by 2. So what is the probability of either head or tail? 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2. So 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is 1. So probability of getting either head or tail is 1. Because definitely we are going to get either head or tail. That is P of A union B. So P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B for mutually exclusive events. That's all. Ha. So in this video, I have explained you about the meaning definition of the term probability. What are the different approaches to the study of probability? Inshallah, we'll continue our theory on this probability in the next video also. After that, we'll start the problems.